Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit of two different varieties. One, Gunpla. Two, a uh, model kit from One Piece. That's right. That's what's happening. We're going to finish up a Gundam. We're going to build a ship. I'm going to say hi to you. I'm throwing the Bear Cave, the Lego, the Scythe emote in the chat. If you're currently a subscriber, you can throw it back to me like Dude Wants His Rug did. Hello. And uh, we'll give applause to Harold. Thank you for hosting the stream as always my friend uh thanks for everybody that's here we're gonna wait a few moments see if anybody wants to join us solf oh god we gotta throw it back in there it's a year happy one year to you solf thank you so much for your continued support from the uh bear cave on the site and thanks solf for renewing your subscription that fucking rules thanks so much um for being a subscriber for a whole dang year that, that's right. Lashbrook is here. Hello, Lashbrook. So, yeah, we're going to see if a few fo few more folks want to join us. We're going to get to building. Oh, Lord Crashington. Also, uh, Tier 1, that's nine months. Keep up the great work. Continue to stay safe. You as well, Lord Crashington. Thank you so much, Lord Crashington, for that uh, renewal of your subscription. And uh, get the applause there. Uh, Mr. Bob is in bat country, apparently. Okay, well, good on you, my friend. Uh, and uh, Lord Crashington has redeemed the gong, and so it is gong time. If you have, if you have, if you missed the gong, because a few people still have, I got this decorative gong. It was a, it was left here when my roommate moved out. And now I have a decorative gong. It's meant to, like, I don't know, be a conversation piece or go on, like, a shelf where you don't put all your books on that shelf. You got a few knickknacks on various shelves to break up the books or whatever. But instead, it is a thing that I now have to reach over, pick up, and hit when people redeem cave points. Um, so what are we doing today? Twofold. We're going to finish one kit, start another. Now, the kit we have to finish... Uh, I took some photos of this because I'm going to kind of disassemble parts of it. Um, and I wanted to show off it without the shield and without the gun. This thing just has so many weapons. Look at look at the big big old weapons on the shoulders here. Just big old weapons that, that hide in the wings. Uh, it's the best use of uh, a waist. And just be like, oh, also guns. And uh, please acknowledge, please notice that... You could attach the two beam sabers together to be a fancy, cool beam saber. Hello, Epic Open World. Welcome. So, yeah. So, we still have to build the shield and the gun, the beam rifle. But I did want to show off the complete and utter nonsense of this kit uh, and all of the, the very silly parts that are involved with it. Because it is very silly in a way that I really appreciate. And that it's just like, I don't know, I think we need more big guns. Oh, uh, well, well, we could put guns here. Well, we could also put guns there. Well, instead of just being a place where we hold the beam sabers, let's also put guns there. And that just seemed to be the answer to, to every proposal of where to put guns. They just went with yes. And I like that. Uh, so we're going to finish this up. Then we're going to start a kit that was sent by an anonymous uh, supporter of the stream. I do not know who bought the our, our penguin friend but someone did and that rules and thank you to the person who did it um bought off my wish list uh because i know that things are not great right now things are tough uh thank you to everybody who's a subscriber thanks to everybody who's watching thank you to everyone that makes uh the bill with bear workshop part of your week uh the folks that are watching hey i, I don't say this enough thank you youtube friends because there are friends that watch on youtube and I appreciate that. You're not all spammers. Some of you are real people. And I appreciate that very much. Some of you are like, this is a this is great content. We should be we should share networks. And I'm like, what is you're not a real person. All of your videos on your YouTube page are how to get a lot of subscriber videos. No thank you. I'm not here for that. I'm here to build model kits and hang out with you and Maybe someday collaborate with other builders, but not now. Um, okay. So, but uh, let's go to the overhead. I'm going to retweet. I'm, gonna, I'm just retweeting. Hey! I don't know why. 
Uh, I just decided that's what I was going to retweet. Um, so the Freedom Gundam. Look at this thing. Look at it with its wings spread out. These wings move around. They, they get really layered. You can do some wild stuff with them. We won't worry about that. Oop, this wing did come apart. It's pretty dang top heavy. Uh, it comes with a stand. And I would say you would not you you would you would not do well posing this without use of said stand um yeah because it the wings are very very unforgivingly heavy uh also i knocked over this these things do pop off um the part of the uh wing here or the guns here side guns uh so uh, real person 69 is not a real person. No, at Beckham World, they're, they're fooling you. They're, they're pranking you. Good. Uh, I was watching Jan's second Lego stream, and his mental breakdown over missing piece was thankfully short-lived. Yeah. Hey, maybe Noling is a good idea after all, Jan. I decided to only tell Jan that I that enjoyed his three monitor or his three webcam setup, because I think the third webcam, the webcam that is basically like shooting like this side or the other side is a cool idea it also uh means that you theoretically could avoid the green screen because you can just put yourself in, a, in one corner which i like uh i'm not going to do a third one that seems excessive for my needs um but i did like it but yeah uh maybe bowls aren't the best way oh i should also say Hey, remember when I couldn't find that piece for Mewtwo? I found it. I found the piece I needed for Mewtwo. Uh, I, I found it like yesterday while cleaning. So I was very happy to find that piece. But that did drive me a little nutty. Uh, Rock uh, Strongo is now following. Thank you for the follow, Rock. Appreciate that. Welcome to the Build With Bear workshop. We are going to uh, finish up this kit momentarily. I do have to remember how to put this piece on. doesn't like to go on well. I'll say that. But yeah, props to him for uh, owning the kitchen backdrop. Yeah, I mean, like, that's where he can stream. And so good on him for streaming there. Like, that's, I got no problems with that. Uh, people got to do what they got to do. Uh, I will say... If you don't have a green screen, I don't like your I don't like your zoom backgrounds in general. Uh, if you're not properly lit, I don't like your fun backgrounds because you you're not properly lit. So just don't just have whatever wall you want. Hey, dirty, welcome, uh, welcome, welcome. Well, we're trying to fix this part of the wing here, and then we'll get or the gun here, and then we'll get back to building. Um, but yeah, uh, I have, I have been in enough zoom calls where people start like bugging out, like their background starts bugging out because they, their natural light changed over the course of the con conversation because they are definitely not in France. They are not at the Eiffel Tower, uh, but they're not properly lit for zoom. Zoom's doing its best trying to green screen out a random ass wall but it's still not it's still not pretty um all right so we got to put a gun and a, sh and a shield on this thing we got to build that we're going to take the hand off of our um our uh, double lightsaber here our beam our beams here because we're gonna need this hand for the shield uh because it can hold the shield which is great um Oh, also, you can take these apart, and they live on the sides, which is pretty neat. But we'll leave them attached for now, because that's better. And we're going to put this aside as we get into... Uh, we're going to work on a beam rifle. And so let's uh, let's get to build it. Um, I hope you're all doing okay. Uh, uh, I gave in to my first uh, uh, hankering in a while today and grabbed a triple, triple water burger tonight. Also, first Coke in weeks. Dirty, I am, uh, y'all know me, and y'all know how much I am a, uh, a proponent uh, of taking care of yourself. Even when taking care of yourself 
means making decisions that aren't necessarily the best decisions in the world, but are the right decisions in the moment. So yeah, you do you. Uh, I got a uh, grocery delivery yesterday. Um, and that grocery delivery included a uh, half rotisserie chicken and mashed potatoes. Because I don't know, the last fucking time I had mashed potatoes, it's been a while. And I certainly can't remember, like, the last time I had a roasted chicken. Now, I ended up carving up that chicken to make it into multiple meals because I don't need to eat a half chicken. But I'll tell you, last night and tonight, that roasted chicken fucking was great. Uh, got a little bit of a headache probably because my eating schedule today has been terrible. Yeah, last work, take care of yourself, my friends, you know, like... Uh, and that like the same thing. That's like last Tuesday was Domino's because fuck it. I need some Domino's. Uh, won a couple of games in over Overwatch today. So today was fine. Hell yeah, Epic Open World. Get those wins in. Do it up. But yeah, I get that. Like sometimes you just like, you know, a big burger sounds pretty dang good. Uh, there is a McDonald's near me. Have I thought about getting Uber Eats? Delivering McDonald's to me? Of course I've thought of that. Am I going to do it? I don't know. The nice thing about doing like Domino's or a actual, another, or, you know, a local pizza chain place that's not a chain or anything is that, you know, if you're getting food, like the, the rotisserie chicken, the half chicken I got with my groceries uh, in their pre, from their prepared, prepared meal section, like, I was able to use that for multiple days. The thing with getting like a lot of McDonald's is, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like reheat nugs. I'm just not going to. So I'm gonna eat all of it. So I shouldn't, because I'm gonna eat all of it. So I shouldn't. Uh, oh yeah, I also finally started training this morning for the job I started back last year. Okay, well there you go, dirty. Learn that job. Uh, I'm going to try curbside pizza and champagne tomorrow. Well, la di da Mr. Bob. All right, Mr. Bob. Okay, Chris. Dang. Pizza and champagne. Okay. Well, all right. Well, hee-haw. I have to use the soundboard for that. That, that deserved a hee-haw. Okay. Uh, the one good thing about lockdowns is seeing people that are used to high quality produce uh, production in a studio uh, having to deal with what a cheap webcam. Yes, it's Skype. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, the old Thurston Howell over here. Yeah, we're dang right. Um, oh, yeah. Well, Lord Crashington. So I didn't watch a lot of this because I don't actually give a shit, but I did watch some of the horse competition that was happening between NBA players and WNBA players, which is a fun idea, uh, but you just see people with like their phones outside, barely picking up their Wi-Fi from inside the house because they don't have their, they don't have like extenders for their Wi-Fi, uh, and just like, I was like, this is like... These are professional athletes who could not get their loved ones to hold a camera for them. They're like, uh, it's on top of a trash can. Like, what? I got an old iPad on top of a trash can. Watch me hit this sick layup. And you're like, okay. I thought that was kind of fun. Uh, yeah, Lord Crashton did it. It's incredible to see, like, um, streamers uh, giving... Uh, pro tips. I, I talked about this. Uh, uh, it was a fun little tweet that um, up until this time, uh, I feel like no late night writer had ever done Twitch except for Mike Drucker. Now that that's definitely not true. There are other late night comedy writers who you know play games on Twitch or or stream, but Mike is clearly like the expert because he's done so uh, quite a bit. Uh, hello, Zero. Welcome. Good morning to you. Um, but yeah, it has definitely been interesting to watch people like in real time figure out like, yeah, man, if you're going to do uh, Late Night with Seth Meyers, 
don't have sunlight coming in. Like, don't, don't be, yeah, close the shade, buddy. Yes, Seth, you probably don't want to do that. Uh, it, it is a, it has been a strange, uh, time to watch people like, you know, just in real time, figuring it the fuck out. Uh, and sometimes they're doing okay, and sometimes they are definitely not. Just, it's weird to hear bad sound on, like, CBS. It's just weird. Uh, I just came here to say hi. Well, hello, and uh, I'm glad you're here. Uh, so I was watching an Overwatch streamer in the UK, and she was talking about how great Domino's is. And See you later, Zero. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, and how great Domino's is and how expensive in the UK it is. And all I wanted to say is, does someone need to fix the pizza situation in the UK? So Epic Home World, I mean, there's one, there's one of two things. One, maybe they do it different in the UK. Maybe they do it different. Maybe Domino's in the UK is actually good. And maybe the stereotype that uh, all food in the United Kingdom is bad and they grew up with bad food and don't know that they don't know what good food is. That maybe that's not true. Maybe it is. I don't know. ESPN is going all in on esports. Is great after, uh, yes, the way people react to that stuff in the past. I totally agree with you. Uh, I can't remember if it's the UK or Canada that has really superior dominoes to ours. Um, I don't know. I will also say this. I tell this story uh, on occasion. A very good friend of mine, uh, grew up with me in, in Connecticut, we would go into New Haven, we would get uh, Worcester Street Pizza, which is like Worcester Street like brick oven like pizza is incredible it is some of the best pizza I've ever had in my life it is my favorite pizza so you would get that, like we would spend the money to get really good pizza, right and then New York, top notch quality pizza, right my buddy Nick moves to uh, Orlando. He lives in Orlando for many years, right? Has a good time in Orlando, does school there, has some really close friends, whatever. whatever. His friends are, s some of his friends who grew up in Florida or, or uh, southern states as well, were definitely sick of hearing Nick complain about how bad pizza in Orlando was. They were definitely tired of hearing Nick talk about how he missed the good pizza he used to get, right? So flash forward a few years, uh, my buddy Nick moves to New York, a friend comes to visit, and the three of us go out and we get John's Pizzeria. It's in, there's one in 44th Street, there's one downtown. It is the third best pizza in New York, but the easiest to get, because you don't have to go to Staten Island and you don't have to wait hours and hours you can get a table at uh at john's pizza they don't do slices you gotta get the whole pie we go there and we're eating and we're having a good time and it's fun and then uh nick's friend gets just real quiet and then just goes okay i've never had good pizza before today and that oh will always stick with me because it was just like yeah this dude was like, I don't know why you're complaining about pizza for so long. Because to him, he had good pizza. He never had better pizza until he had better fucking pizza. And now he knows. Ignorance is bliss, my friends. That's the way it is. Pizza always seems so objective based on what you have around you, right? Yeah, Lord Crash, it didn't like. Also, for most of my life, I didn't think I liked tacos. Can you believe that shit? That I didn't think that I liked tacos. Because the only tacos I had were Taco Bell and tacos my mom made. And I love my mother. Don't you forget that. But my mom is not good at making food. She is not a great cook. And her tacos were not good. My mom did not make good tacos. I never had a good taco until, like, I don't know. I think I, I, I oh, actually was in Albany of all places uh, um, and ended up at a place that was run by a fantastic group of folks 
Uh, it was well regarded, well like well deserved recognition, and it had an incredible taco. And I was like, oh, tacos! It was like, it was rel- revelatory to suddenly be like, oh, okay, tacos can be fucking rad as hell. Shit, I've been goofing up. Falcon says I had fantastic tacos in upstate New York, so I believe you. Yeah. Um, uh, I still don't enjoy tacos. I understand. Best Pizza Hut I ever ate was in Thailand. Okay, dirty. I, I totally believe that. Okay. Uh, w two uh, War Gamer. Hi, I'm new to Gundam and wondering if a couple kits are good for my first. Uh, I like the new art, real grades, and the real grades. Okay, so, um. Uh, W2 uh, Gamer. Um, so this is a 1-100 scale master grade. The I would say, if you are new to building, if you have experience building other things that aren't necessarily Gunpla, then a real grade is uh, um, is, is okay. So here's, here's how it works. You build Warhammer. Okay, great. So you build Warhammer, which means that you are used to small things. This is 1-100. 144 is a lot smaller. And the real grade is a new thing that happens. So basically, here, here's how they work. Perfect grade is very intricate work, giant kit, perfect. It's it's a lot, a lot of work. Master grade, their work. They are the 1-100 scale. You're getting a lot into it. High grade is the easy thing. You can bang out a high grade an hour and a half if you know what you're doing. Real grade is a smaller scale, the 144 scale, so it's smaller, but it is more detailed. It is a lot of work. I don't know if real grade is a great place to start if you don't have a lot of building experience, but you do have experience, you know, like working with with small items. So you might be okay with it. Um, I don't know for, for sure. Uh... I would say starting with a 100 scale would probably be easier because, like, this is a big size kit, right? This is a big size kit. You got some good size pieces you're working with. Uh, but yeah, um, I would do I would do some YouTube research. You know, you type in the name of the kits that you like. Um, I was very a Falcon says I'm very happy I did a couple HGs before I did an RG. Yeah. I would say even the 144 scale, um, a high grade, the one 144, one slash 144 scale, high grade. Also, those are pretty inexpensive compared to the real grades, so you can fuck it up. Uh, if you like a Gundam show, if there's a Gundam show that you're interested in that you've watched before, getting a kit from that show, I always recommend that because at the very least, you're like, well, I don't know a lot about model kit building, but I do know that the Lupus Rex is rad. So I got a Lupus Rex. Fuck yeah. Um, I would try the HG RX 78 that came out uh, two to three years ago. Oh yeah, Mr. Bob. I, I have heard good things about that real grade, or that high grade, I should say. Um, that I always recommend that. Like, hey, If you don't have experience, if you don't have a lot of experience with Gundams, then you just pick one that you think looks cool, or you pick up one that's fairly inexpensive to try or to mech around with, muck around with. Um, there are a lot. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, like, so, uh, my favorite real grade is the Sazabi that came out a couple years ago. I think that kit is beautiful. And fantastic. Um, uh, the R, anything in the RE one hundred line is like a weird kit that I think are 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 great looking, um, and I would definitely recommend kits from from that line of th- like the uh, uh, I built the uh, a Zaku a couple of Zaku's that are in the RE one hundred. The Zaku FZ I think is a fantastic uh, build, like a very fun build. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, real grade is, 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 you know, it, it's a, it, it can be a tough thing. Um, 
but I would also say, like, yeah, like, I, I think I said this, um, you know, you, there are people out there, if you put in the title of any Gundam you're looking for into YouTube, you're going to find reviews, and you just kind of get an idea of some reviewers, like, even if you don't necessarily need to trust their godly opinion on things or anything like that, but they, mo you know, more than likely, uh, you're going to see production shots of it, like, posing shots you're going to see the interstices are going to point at stuff and look at stuff and you can kind of see like oh okay that looked that looked complicated or that looks pretty uh straightforward um one of the nice things about doing like a zaku as your first build is that the bells and whistles are different but a zaku is a zaku uh you know we just did the um the gunner warrior zaku which is a fantastic version of it it has like some differences to it, but it's still a Zaku. It was still like, as I was putting the head together, I went, yep, this makes sense. This is how we do it. Uh, in the same way that like, uh, so should I get an RG and MG? I really enjoy, uh, yeah, I mean like, I like Master Grades because the, well, one of the reasons I like a master grade over something like a real grade is basically scale. A lot of it comes down to scale, right? So this kit is big. The pieces I'm working with are still relatively large. There are a few small ones, but that's also because I am building a kit on stream, which is different uh, than if I was just at, you know, just doing it in my living room for just me. Uh, it is a different experience. Um, but I have found that, like, as a person with, uh, big pause uh, that sometimes I have trouble with these smaller pieces uh, in a uh, in a real grade because they're they're very detailed. Um, and then if you ever want to build something from Iron Blood and Orphans, there is the um, the Barbatos does have a master grade, but most of those are actually non graded. They don't have a grade to them. They are uh, most almost all the Iron Blood and Orphan kits are. Uh, something called full mechanics, which is basically just like not quite a master grade, but not a high grade. They are in between because uh, the, because things can't be simple. It can't just be high grade, real grade, and master grade. There also has to be a bunch of in-betweens. Like the RE100s aren't graded, and sometimes they're actually complicated, but most times they're not. But they're not high grades either. Yeah, it's just an, it's it's a fucking it can be a lot. Did I? No, I didn't just run. Okay. All right, I'm gonna pop out my toolkit here because it looks like I didn't put this together quite right. So we will just kind of gently separate these two pieces. Um, I am using my iFixit kit. Uh, they are not a sponsor, but I have found that. You know, instead of using my snipper clips, often using some sort of tool is better when trying to separate plastics. But really what I just need to do is I need to get this apart here and get this shoved in right. Nope, nope, didn't do it. Right. Okay, try again. All right, that's actually, okay, that's better. Just want to get that in there. It doesn't actually go in flush, but it, it still looks fine. Okay. Um, pre yeah. I hear you. Uh, our gun plus still impossible to buy right now. So Falcon... Um, it depends on where you're buying from, right? So third parties that are coming, that are selling you on Amazon from Japan, forget it. Don't, don't even bother. That's not going to work. Um, Amazon sellers, if you are near an Amazon distribution network, like I have the, there's a Jersey processing area and a lot of stuff flies into Bethpage, New York. So for me, not a big deal. If you are not near one of those big hubs, if you've tracked the package you bought on Amazon and like 
it has to go somewhere there and then somewhere go and there. Uh, that's going to be a real problem. If your shops are still open, you know, like uh, Image Anime here in, in New York is where I sometimes go in if I want to, like, look to that. Uh, they are not open and they are not doing curbside pickup anymore. USA Gundam Store is based in the South. I think they're Florida. I cannot remember off the top of my head. But they are based in the South and they are apparently still shipping. Uh, so the real thing is right now is like forget trying to get Lego from Amazon. That the there just isn't. Uh, yeah, look up USA Gundam Store. USA Gundam Store is great. I don't know if Gundam Planet... It sounds like Gundam Planet was already kind of dealing with like low stock before. I don't know if they picked up. Uh, I love Gundam Planet because they're like in New Jersey and good people and they're just have such a good catalog of stuff. I like them, but yeah, I think USA Gundam Store hopefully is going to have a few things that you'd be and they have a good selection but it seems like they're still shipping um and you can always you know call you know call the people that you're you know a company you're interested in buying from uh but yeah for amazon uh oh i think you said something about that being like amazon shipped my last high grade faster than food yeah it, it kind of depends on where you're at gundam hobby yes uh, Gundam Planet sent an email saying they were intentionally slowing down, but have not seen it yet. Okay. Um, I could see them like, yeah, like maybe just trying to keep the number of people in their warehouse low and just kind of reducing stuff. Also, maybe to keep whatever stock they have, because who knows uh, what's going on. It's, it is a weird time. Uh, I mean, uh, blue brands and, uh, bluefin brands and, uh, premium Bandai, they're still doing new pre-orders. They're still going ahead with all their pre-order stuff. I mean, it makes sense, but yeah, they're, they're still gung-ho. They still want your business, which is like, yeah, all right, sure. Uh, it's going to take me forever to figure out which RG I want to buy anyway. I hear ya. I got a few kits you know sometimes it just takes a while sometimes you're like like there are a few things that are like no brainers for me and then there's a bunch of stuff that are like oh this seems neat oh this seems cool oh that seems all right um all right let's get the last of these done here we are almost done with our shield and then we will work on just putting things together Do that. Great. All right. So let's get the insides where here's our shield area here. We are going to put this like that. Great. Uh, no problem. Goodbye to you. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah. And uh, as always, folks, if you got questions or you got comments about kit stuff, like I am not. You know, obviously an expert or anything, but I am someone that has been doing this hobby for quite some time and always willing to answer questions uh, or refresh people on things. Um, and you in the chat, you know, many, many knowledgeable folks as well. And I always appreciate your input uh, as we go through stuff. But you're having a conversation. Like, it's nice for me to hear, like, how people in other parts of the U.S. or in Canada or uh, overseas, how they're doing with getting equipment and how things are coming out for them. Like that's stuff that you don't necessarily hear from everyone. So it's nice to get that information. Did drop the. Did I miss a piece? A thirty-seven. There it is. It was red, and I missed it. One more piece to have to put on here. Uh, okay, Pat, as far as I'm concerned, you are my anime and model kit expert. Well, I appreciate that, Epic Open World. Um, uh, we got questions, you got panthers. Uh, I will say, I've said this before, that I am quoted as being an anime expert. Um, 
uh, a friend of mine did a thing on Decider, um, and which I was his valuable uh, resource. My friend Brett uh, was covering. There was a thing. I think I've maybe talked about this on stream before, but there was a uh, a bit in um, Terrace House where one of the guys wanted to take a girl on a date and he wanted to go see the uh, Detective Conan movie that had just come out. And the other people in the house were advising him that maybe that was not such a good idea. And I la gave context. Hey, what's up, Urban Buddha? It's been a little while. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I gave some context to my friend about what uh, Detective Conan was and why that might be while well, animation like whatever to go it's a kids anime it's been on for a long time and why that might not be a first date if the person also isn't a fan uh, and that was kind of fun uh, Guriam is following thank you very much welcome welcome to Bill over there and also subscribing with Twitch Prime heck yeah let's throw the bear cave leg of the scythe mode in there and thank our new our late, newest subscriber that rules Ethereum, thank you so much uh, for subscribing, using your Twitch Prime coin. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Yeah, let's throw the Bear Cave Lego and the Scythe Emote in the chat. Uh, that rules. Always happy to have a new uh, subscriber. Uh, thank you for using your Twitch Prime coin on the stream. Uh, and thanks to everybody that's joining me tonight. We are moments away from completing this kit. We have to put on uh, our shield here. And then we will be done uh, with this kit development. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat. And no, I'm not gonna. Do that. Okay, so not gonna cheat. I'm gonna figure this out. How does this go? Where does this go? It goes in here. Okay. Sometimes the applying the shield can be annoying to a kit, but it should be good. Lord Crashington redeemed the gong. Now I gotta play the gong. Thank you, Lord Crashington. Victory gong, indeed. Uh. It's gong time. We got a gong. It's a real gong show over here. All right. Sometimes doing these can be frustrating because you're like, where is this supposed to go? Oh, there it is. So it's on the bottom of this. Great. That goes there. Hand goes here. We just got to put this on there. So our Gundam's nuclear powered mana crystals. <laughs> Yeah, as Lashbrook says, it does depend on the show. A lot of them are nuclear. Some of them are uh, different kinds of uh, experimental crystals. Some of them are solar powered uh, from the from the space space stuff. Uh, magical crystals. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a combination of different things, the different cores and what they do. All right, let's try this other way. Sometimes getting these uh, these hands to do what you want them to do uh, are a little frustrating. So we'll try it like this. Yeah, it kind of depends on the show. Different shows handle it differently. Yeah, sometimes it's like space crystals. And space rocks. Or it's fusion cores. Like it is in in the same way it is in like a... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, right, so like that. So this would go like that. It's always magic crystals. I mean, sometimes it is. It depends on the show. Uh, to, you know... But yeah, it, it can depend. All right, there we go. So we got to do this. Then if we do that. All right, well, I'm not going to get this right. So that's okay. I just know I'm not going to get it right on the stream. I'll get it right after the stream. But anyway, this is our freedom. Uh, yes. Emotional resonance frames, indeed. That is also a thing. Uh, Knights of Magic. Yes, indeed. Yeah, um, Gundam doesn't go into uh, hearts of big animals or f ancient creatures. They don't really delve into that. Uh, 
if I remember correctly, Zoids is some sort of fusion technology, except for the Liger, which is just the heart of the person piloting it. It resonates with the Liger, which brings it, which is why it is able to power up when it has been deactivated for so long. Depending on which uh, series we're talking about, because things are different, um, but a lot of them are. That's why the Liger is special, because it runs on like love, basically. Uh, all right, so we're gonna put this gun on here. Uh, this gun does not want to stay where I wanted to. Nope. No, you're not gonna you're just not gonna be respectful are you I want to take a photo there we go now we can take a photo uh, all right I'm gonna take a photo of this because this is a build complete we have done our due diligence we have done our work we now have a shield and we have a uh, our gun I'm gonna try to pose this to pop this hand off here pop this in like this and lock over there you know when you're not trying to pose them it's not a problem random weapons all right uh i want to watch zoids again i used to watch it at 6 a.m before school heck yeah so epic of world it kind of like Yes and no. I mean, most of the time, it's just you piloting them. Uh, a lot of shows that are not Gundam shows, a lot of uh, mecha shows uh, are a little bit more like the Chosen One or the Vibe, or no one's been able to use that machine. But then you have something like Turn A Gundam, where basically that Gundam chooses the dude and it's just like, all right, you're my new pilot, basically. Uh, but that is that is a bit atypical for Gundam, because Turn A is a weird show. Uh, whereas a lot of the other Gundam series are just like, you know, there are special ones that some people can't pilot because they don't have the the fortitude to be able to pilot it. Um, so that happens in in some Gundam shows. Uh, but often it's just like, yeah, this is my thing. Ah, uh, someone stole my Gundam and they're piloting it now. That sucks. Um, all right, that's the Freedom Gundam from Gundam Seed. It's a 2016 kit, and I will give it a thumbs up. I think it looks rad. Does it need a stand? Oh, uh, yeah, it fucking does, man. Those wings are heavy and shit. But was it a good time? Yeah, it was a great build. Uh, dude, where's my Gundam? Uh... They keep making them easy enough for teens to pile and steal. Yeah, last brick. Well, I mean that's look. There wouldn't they wouldn't be shows if kids couldn't get access to them. Uh, that is, there. If there is one thing that is fundamental to almost every Gundam series, I would say just about all Gundam series, it's that a teen is gonna is gonna steal this Gundam. There's also like, oh, I can't remember which Gundam is where the pilot is bad. Not bad evil. There's one show where um, no new types. Yeah, but there's uh, there's at least one show where like the guy gets into a Gundam and he just sucks shit for like a long time and he gets better. But he just because most of the time it's like, oh, well, this person is like either a new type or they're just special. They haven't really you know made the decision. Uh, one way or the other about what they're going to call them but it turns out that they're gifted as shit and good it's a good thing because they, they we need them to be good uh yeah i mean it happens but uh but sometimes yeah sometimes they're just like you're the you know like often it's you're the chosen one and then every once in a while it's like Man, we would do much better if you were not the pilot of this fucking thing, man. Because you're not great at this. And they're like, oh, I'm trying. Alright, so this is the stand piece. This is the stand. So it can fly. Uh, so we're moving on. Uh, why do they keep letting it go out? I mean, sometimes, like, you know, sometimes bad is better than nothing. You know, get some combat experience, and you can 
Fucking figure it out as you go. I don't know. All right, so what are we building here? We are working on... Uh, this is the Thousand Sunny from One Piece. Now you're saying, Pat, I know what the fucking Thousand Sunny looks like, and it does not look like an Emperor Penguin. What, what's the deal? Well, that's because this is from the movie Stampede, and part of the movie is that the Thousand Sunny uh, and all ships have to fly up to a thing. So it's this is the special version. This is to sell more toys and more figures because it's not the same Thousand Sunny kit, even though they can use most of the same parts. Ha ha ha! Bandai knows what's up. Uh, Double Zeta had early pilot issues. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Bob, I believe that is that is true. Um, so yeah, so this is going to be mostly what we've built before of the Thousand Sunny with some new parts. But also, I wanted to build it. And then also, it's got the components here so that you can uh, make it look like it's flying, which is rad. Uh, and that, that would be a great way to display it. Um, it does have its water transfer. Uh, it's not a water transfer, right? I'm pretty sure it's not a water transfer. Maybe it is. Is this a water transfer sticker? No, I think this is just a regular sticker. Anyway, it's got one big st sticker. Um, uh, is that the name of the ship? So, the Thousand Sunny is the name of the ship. Yes, the Going Mary is the first ship that they used. This is the Thousand Sunny. Now, normally, it would look like a sun that is the sun with like a lion's mane. And that's the Thousand Sunny. A uh, thousand uh, sunny days at, at, at sea. Um, this, so that, but, but it's a little weird to call this the Thousand Sunny because it has, uh, it has been augmented. Uh, also, this is uh, more like the style of the Jolly Roger, their, you know, their pirate uh, symbol. This looks more like uh, the version that Luffy drew first which was then modified by people that can actually draw. And I appreciate that. And I always like looking at the nonsense version of his, uh, of the, of the, of his Jolly Roger, or, you know, pirate flag, if you will. Um, all right. So we got to find step one here. Sometimes these instructions are, are weird where they put their steps. There's the first one. Uh, and if you're saying, Pat, is this kit mostly stickers? Yes. We have now done, this is let's see. We did we've done four because we did the going merry the the thousand sunny normal thousand sunny. We've done uh, the Yuma perfume Yuma or perfume Yuda. I can't remember. Uh, Boa Hancock ship and we've done the Polar Tang, which is Law's ship. The Polar Tang is the smallest of them because it is it is somewhat of a ship, but mostly it's a submarine, and it also has the worst and slash best name. The Polar Tang. Uh, that was an easy build because that is a very tiny ship on purpose. But yeah, there's a lot of fucking stickers. We are going to be adding stickers to things as we build them. And that's okay. Um, so, alright. So we'll start by getting our base here, which is A14. Um... I do appreciate that this is uh, to scale. The instructions are basically to scale, uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, as you can see, like, this is, you know, I don't know what scale a ship this is. I don't know if, you know, like, I can't tell you. I can tell you, like, these are uh, the uh, One Piece kits. Look nice on a desk. That That's what I'll say. The, you could say you could put one of these uh, at your workstation and someone would just be like, oh, you got a cool little pirate ship there, huh? Like, that's what you would get. Um, I also think that they might include... Uh, no, they don't include anything. Else. Okay. I thought maybe they included a way to modify it into the original version, but they did not do that. That's fine. But you can also paint if you want to do some painting. Because I know some people that uh, buy these kits and they do, uh, uh, they just paint the versions of it. They're not, uh, they don't do with the stickers, which is cool. Cool for you. 
Not my style, but it's cool. I know that, uh, you know, when I don't do Gundam, sometimes people are a little bummed, and I understand that. I hope you'll like learning a little bit about uh, just, like, a different uh, style uh, of model kit. I hope you'll be excited about me trying out a different thing. Because it, it's pretty fun. I've enjoyed it. Uh, working on something a little different. Uh, I didn't talk about... I, I guess I, I'm getting caught up on One Piece. I had let it go. And now I'm kind of like getting back into it as we build up. Also, because in the manga world, the manga of uh, One Piece, things are heating up. The return of the, uh, the missing member... Of the uh, of the Straw Hat Pirates has made his return. The uh, possible assumption that uh, perhaps another character is going to officially join the crew that could be happening. Who knows? Maybe she will join. Who who really knows? But yeah, it was pretty neat. In the in the manga world. Uh, shit is about to go down in the manga. Yeah, you're right. It, it is building up. But, uh, one would say the most capable of all members of the Straw Hats, by far the most capable and trustworthy and least in a joking book character is finally returning. So you know shit's going to get real when the guy that should show up to save the day is already there. Also, one of the coolest designs in all of One Piece. Motherfucking. Just such a good, good, good character design. Good art. He's a great dude. Jinbei fucking rules. And I'm psyched that he's back. And we'll see what happens. Alright, so I'm just applying stickers right now. You know the drill. Yeah, he does, right? He does for real. So yeah, so I, I so I'm starting to watch the anime a bit more. Uh, this, it's one of those things where like they introduce some support characters that are the worst parts of uh, One Piece. It's like characters who are clearly not villains but are set up as villains, and then also characters who uh, are clearly villains and set up as not villains. Uh, despite the fact that, yes, in the manga there has been some uh, a character we thought was a good was was a good guy was not the whole time, and that legitimately caught people off guard. Sometimes One Piece is very fucking obvious. Uh, also, a character who's like a ninja and not an attractive person acting, you know, but that's the joke of it is like. Lame as shit. So I'm like, okay, cool, cool. And then Big Mama having amnesia. I'll talk about, oh, I'll talk about a show where a character has amnesia. We'll get to that in the anime chat. Uh, AKA, am I going to keep watching this show or not? There is a show that is on, I am on the fence about, a strongly on the fence about, if it, I'm going to continue to watch it. Because the central premise is so fucking annoying. Oh, we got here. Send along to subscribe. Hey, Pat, just stop by to say hi. Well, hello, and thank you for subscribing, which was Prime. That's a year. Uh, is is the anime chat on a different day? No, not at all. Uh, so first of all, we got to say thanks to Gentleman, and then I'll answer your question here. Um, uh, so let's hit the uh, the the emotes. Twitch Prime uh, for a whole year. Uh, Arista fans throwing in there. Hi, Arista fan. Um, so, uh, Urban Buddha, what happens is uh, I kind of segment my uh, streams in two. 
first hour is about whatever I want to talk about. If something comes up in the chat and that's a good discussion, then about an hour into the stream, I take a break. I do my pause for the cause where I promote my Patreon and my Amazon wish list and my USA Gundam store thing and uh, maybe plug a video like an anime video that I put out today on my YouTube where I talk about the four shows that I think you're great. And then I always get into anime talk and talk about the shows I watched since the last one. Yeah, no, Urban, uh, it's totally okay to, to ask those questions. That's totally fine. Uh, there's some folks, that, there's always somebody new. So it's nice to kind of remind people that that. Yeah, we just kind of fell into doing that uh, a few years ago where I would just, you know, spend some time, you know, the second hour is anime talk, and I talk about the shows that came out since our last stream, which was Saturday. So these will be shows that came out, uh, one show that came out on Sunday, and three that came out today, including a brand new show. Now, uh, Pat Bear's Anime Club, I'll promote, I will say, one of the shows I'm going to talk about today came out, because it came out today, I couldn't include it in, in my roundup of the shows I'm excited about. And I would have added it to it because it seems like it's going to be pretty good. Uh, it's at least got an interesting premise. I uh, uh, hope you're doing well, Pat, but it's getting late. It's time to turn in for me. Well, take care. Thank you for using your Twitch Prime coin, and uh, thanks for stopping in. Uh, I'm doing all right. I hope you're doing okay, too. Um, all right, so let's gotta get this sticker in. The layers here are a little tough, but we'll get that in there. Uh, we will take a pause for the cause in just a moment or two, and then we will get into new anime talk, and I'll talk about the shows I watched and if I am going to give anyone up. As of right now, there's only one show where I stopped watching it this season. Now, there's certainly a few shows uh, uh, that I haven't... Uh, picked up because they just don't appeal to me at all like Arte did not appeal to me the idea of that show uh, there's a idol show that doesn't appeal to me um, the girls who play ten, or the girls who play softball show doesn't really appeal to me uh, like you know there, there's stuff that always happens like that uh, 8 Sun I've been watching I thought the uh I'm, it looks like we're done with the child phase and we're getting into the adventuring phase, which I'm way more interested in uh, because the the thing about like isekais is when, when you're an adult or a teen or whatever and you're suddenly woke up in a child's body, acting like a child doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense to act like a spoiled brat and sometimes that the eighth son was acting like a kid. And I'm like, no, you're an adult man. Get out of here with that. What's happening? So I'm glad that we're apparently over that. And now we're getting into the him as a teen phase, which I'm much more interested in. Uh, get to the proper parts of that show. It's fine. Um, it's not like... My favorite. I mean, it's a traditional isekai, right? And the nice thing is, this season we got a non-traditional isekai. Uh, uh, Villainous. Villainous is totally a different style show. It is very much not your standard isekai. And I'm very excited about that. Uh, somehow, there are like five shows that are based on mobile games, and that's weird. Uh, Villainous seems interesting. Yeah, Urban, I would definitely uh, uh, just uh, recommend um, Villainous. It's just like funny and fun and kind of interesting, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, and the premise of, oh, I woke up inside a video game. I'm the bad guy in this video game. Shit. Like, that's just a fun... That's, to me, way more of a fun premise than uh, I'm playing my avatar in an online MMO that turns out to be real now. Sure. Um, all right. 
We're going to take a pause for the cause, then we're going to get back to sticker work, and I can talk about new anime that came out. But first and foremost, if you're currently a subscriber, you can throw the Bear Cave, the Lego, the Scythe emote in the chat. Always appreciate that. Let the people know. Uh, if you use cash money, thank you so much. If you use your Twitch Prime coin, thank you so much. Reminder, if they use your Twitch Prime coin, hey, just check to see when it uh, expires so that you can hit the renew. It benefits me. It benefits you in some small way. Um, but it's it's nice to see the numbers go up. Uh, I should be getting a payout hopefully tomorrow because of the holiday. Uh, but who the fuck knows how anything's working. But I apparently will be getting a uh, a payout from, uh, from Twitch soon. And I appreciate it very much. Uh, that folks are able to support me that way. I do, and again, I'll go through these pretty quickly. They'll get back to building. I do have a Patreon, and you can join Patreon if you're so inclined. Um, Patreon's another way to support the channel, uh, and you, there are different rewards than you get from being a, a sub, and it's just another option for people. Um, I also have donations. If you're like, if you don't want to buy something off my wish list and you don't want to become a subscriber, but once in a while you're like, I don't know, here's some money to your coffee, you can just donate. That is another way to do this. And you're watching this later on YouTube. All these links are in the show description, so you can just follow those links there. Just hit the more button, and there's show more button, and you can see all those there. Um, and uh, Urban just subscribed. Thank you so much, uh, because you were gifted by an anonymous gifter. You didn't subscribe. You got subscribed. So, uh, congratulations. Thank you to the Anonymous Gifter. Thank you to Urban Buddha for just being here. Uh, and uh, that rules. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, uh, bits and coins are always appreciated. Gifting subs is always appreciated. Uh, that's another way. If you're a subscriber and you just want to share the love with someone, let them become a subscriber, get some cool emotes. That's another way to do it. You can join the, you know, Anonymous Gifter. Uh, not necessarily uh, on the leaderboard. Dirty, still holding it down with one. Um, but yeah, that's another way to do it. Because uh, obviously, you're bu I'm buying stuff to, to keep uh, the stream going. And some people do buy things to help me uh, have things to build on stream. They do buy them. Uh, I have an Amazon wish list. I would say, if it is not Twitch Prime eligible, probably don't buy it. Uh, you know, the wish list is kind of hard to keep up to date. Obviously, and also, I'm not mad. Uh, please, I am not mad. Uh, but I've got some stuff. I've got some high grades there that are, you know, in tw the twenty dollar range. Uh, some Lego sets. Uh, oh, that ice cream truck uh, it will not be in stock till the end of the month, but is a good price right now for a two hundred piece Lego set. Uh, but yeah, I put some high grades in there and, and some other stuff that I would like to build on stream. But like, I understand. Uh, Y'all are here. This is not, uh, you know. I'm not. I'm never mad if people don't buy things for me to build on stream. But if people do do want to build them or buy them, I'll build them and they'll jump the queue. This was bought by an anonymous gifter, and so it jumped the queue. And now I'm building it before I build other things. Ooh, the uh, the three and or not three. It's not three and one. Uh, the yeah, it's the three and one monster burger truck. The Lego monster burger truck is down to forty bucks. That got really popular on the internet and shot up in price and it looks like it's coming down so that's fun um also as an alternative usa gundam store is still selling stuff now they don't have a wish list thing the same way but you can buy a gift card from there it's another option because i also understand sometimes people are like i would like to not use amazon and i get that uh you go in there you buy a gift card it gives you a code in your email you send me that code uh, a whisper here on Twitch, a DM on Twitter, because my DMs are open. That's another option. That's another way to do it. And they're still shipping things, so that is a uh, a thing. Um, that's another thing that you could do if you're so inclined. What you should do is join my Discord if you don't already. I post photos of all the stuff I build on stream. People post stuff they're working on. Sometimes they promote things. And you can see what other people who hang out here in the chat like to do. Uh, and that's, that's fun. Uh, let's see, uh, I'm going to drink some water. I recommend you drink some water. Let's take a water break here, and then I'll plug a couple things, uh, that I made videos, and then we'll get back to building, and I'll talk about some current anime. But right now, drink a little water. Oh, that's good. That's good water. 
All right. So let's talk about two videos you could watch if you wanted to. Bearing the List. This one's about dogs. Every Wednesday, I put out a new Bearing the List where I use Tier Maker to rank things. I rank dog breeds. It's pretty fun. Um, there'll be a new one this week. Then also, uh, I would recommend you check out Pat Bear's Anime Club. Every other Monday, I put out a new episode. This one is talking about the four shows that I recommend the most. Now, they do have caveats. Two of the shows that I recommended only have had one episode out, so things could change. But I put some caveats there. I also included a bonus show that I talked about that is an ongoing because there's only one new Shonen right now. Uh, there's two ongoing Shonen shows, and there's one new one. Uh, and I can't recommend Food Wars, the fifth plate, to you. Either you like that show or you don't. And also, if you do like the show, maybe you don't even want to watch the fifth one because you finished the fourth plate and it's a good ending of the series. And now we got this other thing. But there's not new. There's not a new, you know, traditional shonen. So I recommend one that's an ongoing as a bonus. Because uh, I thought that might be nice. And then, uh, all right, let's get back to building. And let's talk about anime. Here are the four shows that I watched. Um, uh, I want to say the fifth plate is going to be the best ending of the series. Well, Dirty, I mean, like, it'll be interesting to see what happens with it. Uh, this idea of what I presume to be someone that, uh, while uh, Soma's dad was traveling, learned from him and then feels abandoned because he opened up his restaurant and, you know, with his wife and had a kid. And so this guy is going to take ultimate revenge, I guess. I guess. And that's kind of interesting. But the whole the whole end of the fourth plate felt like a good ending of the show. Um, so I don't know. But it did feel like this is a good place to end it. So I don't know. Ah, eh, whatever. We'll figure it out. Um... But who knows? Uh, okay. What I do know is that it is time to uh, talk about the shows that came out yesterday and today. So these are Sunday and Monday anime shows. First one is, it is a uh, it is on Funimation and it is uh, uh, Shachibato President. It's time for battle. This is based on a mobile game uh, that is a strategy game. Uh, where you go into dungeons and you you are the president of a co of an adventure company and you tell people what to do, um, and your party in this case is your secretary, your bookkeeper, who is also a knowledgeable person, your warrior, and their younger brother, who is the healer. So already, uh, it it breaks from some traditions, because it's not an isekai, but it is a harem. But there's a dude in it, and that's kind of fun. Also, I, I didn't say this last week. What I do like about uh, President It's Time for Battle, the main character has a yellow ribbon. It's like a ponytail and a yellow ribbon. And I know that that is probably to note the fact that he was being, like, lazy before he became the president of this company. But it also kind of feels like they're just, like, um... Uh... It just he just looks a little different. I didn't realize the healer was a boy at first. Yeah, the healer is a young boy, a younger brother. Um, but the main dude is kind of feminine in a way that like isn't necessarily to say that he's weak. He just is, and I kind of like that. I like that he's like, you know, he's got his like multicolored. I guess I'm the president. Like this is me dressed up, not really that great suit going, but like I don't know. I kind of like that. I kind of like the design of this dude. Um, I'm into it. We'll see what happens with him, but we'll see what happens in the show, really. Because uh, this one is they're broke, and they're trying to get enough money to pay the taxes on the equipment that apparently years ago, his dad, who ran this company before he just disappeared, donated a lot of stuff to a museum. 
and the equipment that that he donated they would they could definitely put to good use right now as they're trying to rebuild the company um but they can't do that yet. They have to get the money to pay the taxes on it. So they are doing this event. And we ran into a shitty dude who is. Uh, I appreciate this. So we ran into the guy that uh, uh, is another adventurer, works for another company. And he was like always annoying to uh, our, uh, our warrior character. And it's just because he was trying to get her attention because either, you know, he wanted to be friends or more. Who knows? But he's shitty. And it's nice because they immediately call him out. I appreciate that. They're like, he's basically a stalker. And they're like, oh, I don't know if he's a stalker so much as he's like, wants to like be your friend and you're, you just don't pay him attention. You forgot his name or whatever. He wants to be, your, maybe he wants to be your rival and you like don't care. Uh, so that was kind of interesting, and there was a character that seemed to be much more adept at what's going on, and much smarter about things. So it'll be interesting to see if sh what's happening there. I'm kind of interested in it. Um, uh, it's so I'll say this: it seems fine, and uh, I'll talk about another show soon that has a pr uh, a thing that this is this is this character's game that I'm sick of. The idea that this guy is not necessarily right to be president because he's not really trained to do it. Like, he's not a skilled adventurer. He's just a dude that was, like, you know, is unemployed and figured things out. Um, I appreciate that very, very much. Like, that's what they're going for with this story. Uh, and they kind of mention it now and again, but they don't really harp on it. And, like, the clear point of this show is that he is going to get better at this and he's going to step up and he's got uh, the heart for it and he wants things to go well for these people. Uh, he wants to make sure his childhood friend isn't sad, who is the secretary. Uh, like, he clearly cares for her and wants to succeed, if only for her, which is like, uh, you know, it's just like some good, solid motivations for a character. Um I'm interested in seeing where it goes uh, more than some other shows that are out this season that I am uh, less interested in. All right, so we need 85. Um, which is a red sticker there. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so that show I think is, is totally fine. Um, uh, I mentioned this. Uh, last week when the first episode came out, also on Funimation, is uh, uh, Shironeko Project Zero Chronicle, which is um, also based on a video game that I, I believe it is based on a, a mobile game. Um, but this is not that game's plot, which a bunch of people thought it was and were reporting, like a bunch of sites were reporting that as the plot. Um, but it apparently isn't the plot of the game. Uh, it is a prequel event, which is why that name is Shiro Neko is in it, but they're not cats, because I guess there are cats in the actual game, but not in this. Uh, we got introduced to some minor characters or supporting characters that seem interesting. I, I'll say this. This is what I will say about uh, 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 Shiro Neko. The opening theme kicks ass it's real good uh and so like that got me like amped and i was like oh, okay all right i'll give this a go um i don't know if it's gonna like keep my attention but it's kind of interesting uh like the idea of the people in the that live in the sky that use light magic you know are fearful of the king of darkness as you should be but they're starting to wonder if everyone in the kingdom of darkness is necessarily evil just because they're from the kingdom of darkness, which is like an interesting thing to think about. Uh, and I guess like that's probably going to be like they just live in the land and, you know, their pow their powers are different. So it'll be kind of interesting to see what happens with that. Uh, 
as this one, and there's a rival that, that is appearing. Because basically, I, look, we all know the princess or queen of the light people is a pretty lady. And the, on the other side, the king of darkness is an evil person. And the person who is training to be the successor of the king of darkness, who wants to become the next king of darkness, uh, so that he can, I don't know, do whatevs, uh, is a nice, you know, is a dashingly handsome young man that's idealistic. So you know they're going to fall in love, and you know that's going to be a problem. So, like, it's kind of, all right, whatever. But it could be good, and so I'm going to keep watching it. Also, I'm literally talking about four shows that came out on that are uh, Sunday Monday shows, and I certainly liked it more than Princess Connect Redive, which I don't know if I'm going to watch another episode of. Um, Princess Connect is also based on a video game where cooking seems to be a big important part of the video game, but hasn't been about the anime. It's pretty generic. Uh, he is going to connect the princesses. So here's the here's the, the problem they have to solve, right? When you have a blank slate main character in a video game, you're just that character and you're doing whatever, right? How do you solve that problem in an anime adaptation? Well, in... Uh, uh, Sachibato, you just like make him not great at it and he's learning the ropes and so you're learning as an audience member, you're learning as he's learning. That's how they solve that problem. In this game, or this anime, uh, they make him an important main character. He, he uh, you know, he at some point did some great stuff and he's going to do great things here, but he died in a previous attempt to do some heroic stuff and so he has memory loss now there's a way to do I don't remember my past and there then there's what they did in Princess Connect which is the joke is that he has no common sense he has no fighting ability he's a nice boy but he's just off and can't do things. And so the core conceit of this thing, like, it's played for laughs. Uh, the person who knows that he's an epic, like, strong character and can do all this stuff, but it knows that, like, something bad happened to him. Like, she's definitely, like, into him and trying to be supportive. And that's cute. It's cute that she's being so supportive. Um... But, uh, like, when he goofs up real bad, she gets, like, this, like, expression in her mouth, like, looks like an X, and it's cute, but it keeps happening. And we met a, uh, uh, we met a cat girl today, because, of course, we did. I think we're just going to keep meeting different, pri like, we're going to meet a lot of different princesses. It's Princess Connect. That's the show. I just don't know if I can deal with, like, I'm going to need this dude to get, like, he doesn't have to get, um, he doesn't have to get, like, badass overpowered. Like, he can instinctively do that. Like, he can still be bad at fighting, but I'm going to need him to not be completely clueless about how anything works. Like, he's basically a baby, and I kind of can't deal with that. So I don't know if this show is for me. So I might... I will know during the next episode of Princess Connect if I'm going to keep watching the third episode of Princess Connect. It's going to be like Listeners, the first show I dropped, where halfway through the second episode, I was just, like, checking Twitter and yawning, and I hadn't even paused Listeners. I just turned away from that monitor. And I was like, oh, yeah, I don't give a shit about this. So I kind of don't give a shit about Princess Connect. Redive. Um, and then a new show that debuted today. 
that I would have included in my roundup because it's rad as fuck and I'm really interested to see where it's going. And that is Woodpecker Detective Office. De sorry, Woodpecker Detective's Office. Uh, you think it would be de Detective Agency, but it's Woodpecker's Detective's Office. Uh, it is the show. It is the Mejian era. It is, you know, the late 1800s into the early 1900s. Uh, you can still be a poet as a career, but it is hard to make money doing that. So maybe your friend who's getting into teaching and giving up poetry, uh, and you decide you're going to open a detective agency because you can solve crimes. Uh, a detective and a poet are basically the same thing, apparently. Uh, it seems neat. The characters are fun. Uh, there's a, you know, a poetry circle and those characters are all going to get involved as well. And you see different styles and different stuff. Uh, it also feels very fucking gay and, and all, you know, and all of the good connotations of me saying that it feels queer and great. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing more of it. Uh, it's just like pretty fun boys solving mysteries. Uh. I'm into it. It's like what that Sherlock Holmes anime could have been, but it definitely isn't. So, yeah, I'm into it. Uh, I've only watched one episode because there's only been one, one episode, but it was a Grudge Roll Woodpecker's Detective's Office. Woodpecker Detective's Office. It's not, I keep saying Woodpecker's, it's Woodpecker Detective's Office. I will get better at that name as we go. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm into it, man. I'm definitely into it. Uh, so I am going to look into picking up some other shows as I drop shows. Um, uh, I said that uh, listeners, I already dropped listeners as the first casualty. Uh, Princess Connect is probably my next drop. Um, let's see. Let's look at the other shows I've got. Food Wars, I'm going to keep watching because... Whatever. Uh, Apera Ronman. Uh, Apera Ronman, I'm like very into, but I could see it like it could be a problem. I don't think it's going to be one. But if the characterizations of some of the minor characters who are minority characters is like unwatchable, then that would be a, a real bummer. We'll see what happens. But uh, that is me just being worried, I think, more than reality. But you never fucking know. Uh, Gal and Dino, best show of the season. Uh, My Next Life is a Villainess is great. Kaguya-sama, Love is War. Like, I'm going to watch that. Well, what am I not going to watch that? Uh, there is a new character getting introduced. And, you know, that could always change things. But I still think this is going to be a show that I keep watching. Because it's just fun. Why, why did the first episode have a knockoff of Vogue by Madonna when she was breaking and entering? What the fuck? Why did that happen? That was such a weird thing that happened. That's such a weird choice. Uh, Pat, is it an actual woodpecker? No. No, Mr. Bob. Uh, they don't explain why it's called that except that it's an evocative name. Uh, they're, they're, just, they're just young men. They're just young human men. Human men that named it Woodpecker Detective's Office. I, I don't, I, they may explain it. They did not at the end of the first episode. Also, hey, spoiler alert. Uh, they heavily imply, if not flat out say, that the main character died. And this is all a flashback. Uh, but that's how this starts. Because it's based on, uh, this is actually based on a novel, I believe, which is cool. Um, like a 1999, uh, a crime novel, detective mystery. Uh, but also the guy could have just like given up being a detective and that's why that happened like I would be totally okay if that was a twist because I because uh, uh, it's also like why did you start the show like this you didn't have to but yeah that seemed pretty good uh, Diary of Our Days at Breakwater so if a big portion of this show is um, that our main character uh, is just really bummed about being in the club 
then that's going to be a turn off because I, I talked about this before how uh, it's kind of unusual for a slice of life to start with someone being coerced into doing something. Usually that is the realm of like a shonen or uh, the realm of a sports anime. So to have that in a uh, in a slice of life where the main character doesn't want to join the club, uh, hopefully that will just be over pretty quickly and it'll mostly be her learning and having a good time. Because I like the characters. I just thought that was a bit of a weird thing. Um, Tower of God feels like it's going to be slow as shit. It's just going to take its sweet-ass time. And, like, I like it. So I'll keep watching it. Oh, yeah, Black Clover. Uh, Black Clover is going to be interesting because it's uh, this show has taken breaks, but it's never done filler before. We are entering its first ever filler arc. Uh, there was a time skip uh, in the manga, and they're not going to time skip and take a break. Instead, they're going to do... Uh, basically, they did a time skip as they all got stronger because you got to do the time skip. It's an anime. But Black Clover as a manga handled the fighting tournament arc really well because it was short and it was cool and it was like team battles and like, oh, I thought that was pretty neat. So I think it handled that very well. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, the anime handles uh, filler. Didn't that happen to Ice Shield? Yeah, so Ice Shield was... He did want to join, but like he he got he got forced into like hiding his identity, because the main dude was like definitely an asshole. Uh, but like Yom, Yomamushi Pedal, um, he uh, uh, definitely doesn't. He wants to rebuild the anime club. He doesn't want to, you know, be in the cycling club. And then he learns that not only is he good at it, that he loves it. So it's a very sports anime kind of thing, um, and not really a slice of life. Usually slice of life is like board games, camping, tell me all about it. And not like, I don't like fishing. I don't like fish. I don't like the sea. Oh, I want to join the crafts club. You've made me join your club. Like that usually, there's usually not like you made me do this. It's usually not a part of, uh, of a slice of life. So that's kind of been odd. I still like it. It's just kind of odd. Um, yeah, like I said, Tower of God. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think it's slow. Uh, uh, I'll keep watching it. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see what towers aren't about fighting. Because uh, I'm sure there will be some. But, you know, it's a show about fighting. So I think I'm going to like, you know, if I don't like it, then I won't. And the art is growing on me. It's not my, still not my favorite, but it's growing on me. Uh, and then, Eight Sun, are you kidding me? I'm going to keep watching it. Uh, I'll be, you know, I might drop it if the, uh, sorry. I might drop Eight Sun if I don't like this part of the show, which seems to be the bulk of it, which is him as an adventurer meeting various ladies to join his cause and then dealing with some stuff and eventually becoming the lord of his area of his uh 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 of his region um but this seems to be the bulk of it is him like using magic and doing his thing and whatever like that should be interesting to see but that's basically what the bulk of it's going to be now that he's not a teen anymore or, or a young boy anymore uh and we're going to see him as an adventure, and that could be interesting. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, and then, oh yeah, uh, I can't see myself dropping uh, uh, Kakushigo, Kakushigoto because it's just fucking funny. It's a funny slice of life. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the premise holds up. The premise being uh, that the the dad. Um, who's now a single dad uh, is he is embarrassed that he is a manga artist who does joke manga, dirty joke manga not porn but just dirty jokes um, and he's embarrassed by that and he does not want his daughter to know that that is what his dad, her dad does for a living and the show opens the first episode opens with her discovering his, you know, his storage unit and discovering a part of his her dad she never knew so apparently he keeps that fucking secret, and this show is going to be 
us watching him do that in more and more elaborate nonsense ways. So that could be really interesting. Um, it could get tiresome, but I like the premise and I like the other characters. I like that a lot of people in his life know his secret. Uh, like her, uh, the girl's teacher knows and she's a big fan and is psyched about it. Uh, I like that. Uh, yeah, learning through the different characters and her and his support staff all seems pretty fun. So that's cool. I like that. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if there are any other shows. Uh, oh, I finally watched uh, Dinky Kai, uh, kind of a little on the uh, pervy racy side, but I like that it worked in a manga shop. Yeah! Yeah, that, that show's okay. Yeah. That's not... I don't know, not my favorite, uh, but like, you know, that's the best, you know, that's all right. Uh, there's some fun characters in that show, but yeah, it is, uh, it's a little, uh, it's a little pervy, but like, it's a fun show about those workers. Um, uh, thank you guy. Yeah. I don't hate that show. Um, I'm going to look at... Uh, I'm going to write... While I'm putting these stickers on here. So, uh, uh, G-San is the only show right now that I wish I could be watching that is... Uh, has not been picked up. It is the only show right now that just has not been picked up that I was like, oh man, I wish I could watch this show. Uh, I'm not watching Fruits Basket Season 2 because I was pretty bored by the end of season one I might binge that show there's no there's no reason to say that I won't pick it back up but right now it does not hold any interest to me so I am not going to be watching it um because I just kind of yeah um I'm just looking at the schedule uh and I'm like looking at any shows that I didn't watch uh that might be out. Uh, yeah. Gleepner, I never even... I really, like, barely tried uh, to watch that. If I hear good things, I'll watch it. Um, I'm not watching BNA. Uh, you know, that's something I could seriously consider picking up at some point. But right now, it doesn't necessarily hold my attention. Uh, I do like Trigger's uh, original works, or no, I'm sorry. I like Trigger's licensed works more than their originals. So, you know, because I really like Little Witch Academia, and um, I, I liked a lot of SSS as Gridman, which is modification. So, that I might, uh, yeah, the baseball girl's not really, yeah. Uh, Komada Jinsan the, uh, is a short, it's a one minute short about. Uh, a, a, a flirtatious romantic grandpa and nobody picked it up because of course they didn't why would they pick up that I'm, but I'm bummed because I, I want to watch it uh, that's a short that I would have liked to have seen oh well uh, let's see I'm trying to see if there's any other show oh yeah Millionaire Detective uh uh, Heather from Loading Ready Run said that she liked it. She hopes that the main character develops a personality. Apparently, he's very cold and calculated. So, I could pick that up. That airs on Thursdays. I do have a bunch of shows that I'm watching. So, maybe if I, like, you know, like this week I have to finish it for Dendogram because they pushed the last episode to this week. So, hopefully they actually air it and I can finish that. Uh, I've got five shows I watch, but, you know. I could pick that up on Thursday. Uh, I definitely feel like I can't pick up anything that comes out on Friday or Saturday. Because my Friday, Saturday is busy. Because uh, Friday, Saturday right now is uh, Food Wars and uh, Para Ronman is uh, my Friday. And then Saturday is Gallon Dino. My Next Life is a Villainous. Kage-sama, Love is War, and Ascendance of a Bookworm. 
So, and I got to watch all those before the stream starts because I got to watch before the stream starts. Y'all deserve that. Me reviewing things, so. And then sometimes I'm, I don't know if I'm going to watch, you know, like One Piece and talk about One Piece on, Mon on Mondays, but I probably will when I get caught up. I might talk about the what's going on in the world of One Piece. Uh, because that usually comes, that's like Saturday night, basically. All right. Send us a bookworm has a new season. So, yes, it's basically, uh, although I will say Crunchyroll, I believe Crunchyroll is, is not, hasn't named it. They called it a second season, but I think it's just new episodes. Uh, Oh, God damn it. Crunchyroll's... Uh, uh, Crunchyroll's uh, Q system sometimes just doesn't keep shows in your queue. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, it started with episode 15 because there were 14 episodes and then two OVAs that they put up as episode 14.5. Um so they're continuing it as if it was all one season because uh, there was a break there. Uh, but um, but yeah, it is uh, it is back with new episodes. So there's more a sentence of a bookworm. Uh, it is the arc of her uh, at uh, as a you know a, whatever a blue robe. Uh, it'll be I guess that'll be interesting to see. I don't know. I like it. I like the first season. I didn't watch it as it aired. The first season of Ascendance, I, I wasn't watching it as it aired because there was just a lot of shows that season. And also, there were a lot of isekais that season. And it was kind of slow and not an action one. So I, I, I kind of like skipped it. But... I Yeah, I hear you, everybody. Yeah, for me, it was just like, there would be episodes that I was like, okay, that was okay. And then there were episodes that I was like, oh, this rules. I really like the show. So I, it was a bit hit or miss for me in some instances. But overall, I think it's a good show. Um, and I like that they, they got a better time slot for the second half now. Because now it comes out uh, on Saturdays here in the U.S. So that's good for them. I guess it did pretty well. All right, so put this on like this. All right. Uh, as I said, I'm really interested in uh, where Black Clover goes. Uh, I assume this will lead into like lean into the silliness of the training. Um, one could imagine, like, I'm not caught up in the manga, so I don't know where the manga goes with with Black Clover, but one could assume that there are references to people training and the abilities they have, and I guess we're going to see that, which is kind of good. Uh, good night. I'll catch you later. Harold, thanks for being here. Have a good one. Talk to you soon, my friend. Um, I'm also watching Saint Seiya. Now I always wanted to and never did. Hell yeah. Uh, I mean, I watched a lot of Saint Seiya in the past. I haven't watched, like, newer Saint Seiya stuff. Um, like, I haven't watched, but uh, I've watched, you know, I used to watch it from back in the day. It's just good boys with good powers trying to help people out, and it's vaguely Catholic, or vaguely Christian, just in the names of things, and vaguely Greek. It's in that very fun Japanese style, where it's like, we're just going to take, like, things. Uh, I've seen it in Spanish a long time ago, and it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's like good gung-ho boys getting things done, doing what's up. Uh, I said uh, one of my big bummers for uh, Retro Crush, which is an interesting app. It's got some good stuff on it, a lot available for free with ads that aren't don't seem terrible, terrible. You know, it's not a review of the service or anything, but that's my initial impression. Uh, is that like, oh, not bad. Um, but one of the things I, I was definitely bummed about with, uh, with that was that they had, uh, is listed as Ronin Warriors, 
but it is the samurai war or samurai troopers uh um dub it is the dub of ronin warriors and that bummed me out because I was like, oh, man, I, would, I wouldn't mind watching like the uncut original version of this and not the weird TV version. Because I'm like, Cause they definitely skipped some shit. Like, they definitely skipped a few things in the dub. So, or they didn't explain things well. Or maybe it's confusing. Yeah, it used to show weekday mornings here. Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, oh, that'll be cool to watch. And I was like, oh, no, I don't want to watch the dub. I forgot about Retro Crest since I can't use it in a browser. Yeah, Lashbrook. I mean, I haven't checked it, but as of last time, it was it was app only. Uh, they're going for the app watching experience. I don't know if they have since added uh, ways to watch it on a computer. Uh, that, yeah, it was like a yeah for me. I, I think it was like so. It, it started as an as a Saturday, like a weekday afternoon show and then eventually the uh, the affiliate that was airing it in syndication started airing it in the mornings and I had to tape it on VHS to watch because I was le I had to leave for school early but I remember thinking that Samurai Troopers was pretty cool slash Ronin Warriors was pretty cool so I would like to go I would like to watch the the Subtitle of that. I wonder. I'll have to look that up because I'm not going to do it now. Because, uh, as I've said, Funimation, um, I don't like their player. I think their player is pretty bad. Like I said, I hadn't watched the. I watched the first season of um, Love Is War on Crunchyroll, and the second season is only on Funimation. So I went to watch that, and Funimation player was very confused about the idea of me not watching the first episode but watching the first episode of the second season like it definitely didn't want me to do that it wanted me to they're like oh you must mean this and I'm like no no I've watched the first season you just as a company got the exclusive rights to it so now I have to watch the second season with you just let me watch it uh, yeah I think their player is also their player doesn't have a time thing on it it tells you the duration or like it gives you like you know like whatever you can kind of see where you've been in the show but like hey tell me how much time is left in the episode it's weird don't love the Funimation player that much uh, definitely prefer the Crunchyroll player but I also know that like wait is this the right number 61 that's not the right number oh no Hopefully that will not be an issue. If I've used, if I have to use tape on that, I will. But hopefully that'll be okay. I grabbed the wrong, the wrong windows. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, like I said, the Crunchyroll queue has been really weird. They switched it to like, to like the order, the default order is like the last show you watched, like. Or something, I don't know. They changed how they run the queue. And I don't like it. But. And then, yeah, sometimes things just don't appear in the queue anymore. And I think that's, like, weird. Just disappears from your queue. Okay. Continue putting our ship together. The nice thing about these kits is, like, you get some progress done. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of stickers that have to go on. It's a lot of work, but, you know, we're on step six, and we've got, you know, a bunch of a boat. It's pretty good. It's just that every piece comes with a lot of stickers, and that's the whole thing. Uh, you know, once we once we get to the, uh, the sale, that's where it, it gets actually tedious. And I would say not fun. I would say the sales are the worst part of this kit. Because it's just like, just make it two-tone. Don't stop this. Figure out a way to do it. I would say that part isn't as fun. But the other stuff, I'm totally okay with. The fact that this is just like white. And then we're going to put... We're going we're gonna to do the color. 
on it. Okay, that's fine. Three and four. Uh, but yeah, that's the shows I'm watching right now. Um, I'm not really watching anything that's... I mean, you know, I'm watching internet stuff. Uh... I'm very happy that the guy, the guy that runs Cruising the Cult, uh, sorry, not Cruising the Cult, Cruising uh, the Cut, Cruising the Cut, it's a guy about uh, that he seems to be doing okay. He put a video up of him walking. Um, so, you know, he hadn't been posting videos because he was on vacation, and I was like, oh, I hope that guy's okay. He's in New Zealand. I hope he got traveled back to the UK properly and had to go into quarantine. I hope he's doing okay. Apparently he is, so that's good. Um, let's see. All right. Uh, the Bon Appetit, it's been kind of interesting to watch them do, like, home stuff. That's been kind of, and, like, mix in a few, like, you know, materials they had already done. Like, they still have a few, they still have video of stuff from their office. They, you know, filmed, like, last year, like, some of the gourmet makes and stuff like that. Uh, but then they're, you know, they're doing home stuff, uh, which is kind of interesting. The group ones are pretty fun. Uh, uh, Higzilla is following. Thank you for the follow, Higzilla. Welcome to the Build with Bear uh, workshop. We are currently assembling the Thousand Sunny. But we are doing the Stampede movie version. So it is the Emperor Penguin design of the Thousand Sunny. Lots of stickers, but a pretty fun build. But thanks for being here. Um, yeah, I would say uh, Bon Appetit has been kind of interesting to watch them do uh, new material in the current times. Uh, that's been kind of fun seeing the, you know, people and how they're set up and what they're doing and how they're managing has been kind of interesting. Uh, the um, uh, you know Canada, or at least the area that uh, Loading Ready Run is in, um, Victoria, they do not have shelter in place, but they do have social distancing. So, like, they've been doing like people been you know, doing stuff from home and like a show that normally would have two or three people uh, on the stream just has people calling in like via discord uh, and occasionally video stuff as well, or like one person in the office who can run stuff. So it's been kind of fun. So these are like people who are like part of their main job is streaming, but they don't necessarily stream from home. They have this unusual thing. Most of people, uh, like, when we think of, like, some of our people that we watch a lot of their content, they are not doing, they're not using OBS, like, Alex Navarro learning streaming stuff, because Alex is on all these streams and all these videos, but he's not the one running them. So, like, him learning how to do that out of his apartment and, like, getting that, or that's been kind of interesting, the same thing with Loading Ready Run, like, oh, learning how to, like, Hey, I want to do an Animal Crossing stream. How would I do that? I like folks learning that kind of stuff because they've had one of the th two or three producers who run streams and keep the, the things going. Like, they're not there for them. So that's been, like, kind of interesting to watch. Like, you know, you know, you want to make the best of this shit, right? So, like, that's a thing you can look at and go, like, oh, that's interesting. Like, oh, th that's how they're doing it. Like, Oh, look, look, that's how they're figuring it, that out. And like, okay, yeah, all right. Like, yeah. I know Brad Shoemaker is trying to up his game a little bit for the uh, the giant uh, beast cast tomorrow. Uh, bad time for me. Night Pat and Chat. Work day tomorrow from live from my living room. Urban Buddha, I'm about to close out anyway. 9 to 11 is the stream for me, Eastern time. So, yeah, I got a couple minutes left. I'm going to start a new piece. Um, so totally understand and, uh, have a good night. Thanks for being here. Uh, I definitely miss Giant Bomb Studios at this point. Yeah, you know, like Jan running things and knows what he's doing. Jason and Vinny and Abby, they all know their equipment. Like 
Brad is having to learn uh, uh, how to like switch, do the switcher, which like Jan can do fine because Jan is, you know, not really running the podcast. Brad is running the podcast and the switcher. So that's been like an interesting thing. And of course they had an ad run. I don't know if you know, you might not know. I know they had an ad run today on the uh, New Day podcast. So there might be a few more people tuning in. Who knows? Uh, that was that was a fun thing. Just like had a fun little ad having like having Xavier Woods say like, "Oh, have you heard about the Beast Cat or sorry, the Bombcast?" Well, yeah, they're professionals talking about video game stuff, and you can. Yo, go to giantbomb.com. Find them in the podcast. I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? This rules. Uh, Alex has been my favorite bunch so far. Nice chill streams. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I like those. I like Brad streams stuff. Uh, that was fun. I think Brad, Brad streams have been kind of fun. Uh, he did break me because I had no idea... Uh, he just said nut server which means a thing that I had just never heard of before and so he definitely like broke my brain for a couple minutes it's like oh yeah my nut server is under the desk and I was like what is happening right now what what words are you saying what do you mean your nut server uh, Nick's Cage themed rock band stream was top notch oh yeah Hell yeah, that was fun. Yeah, Alex is having a good time. All right, so we are wrapping up the stream for the night. Uh, I am going to go and look for uh, someone to host because we've been doing that at the end of every stream. We've been uh, vi visiting somebody. Uh, let's see. There are a bunch of different people we could visit. Uh, I, bet, I bet Kathleen's stream is going to end soon because they've been going since 8 so I bet they're ending. Mary's playing Half-Life. That's fun. Uh, it's tough for her to keep up eye on chat. Uh, hey, we have him. Yes. All right. Let's see how she's doing. Yeah. We are going to go visit the excellent Xandra. Xandra, uh, who uh, did, uh, did my emotes here and is a fantastic person is uh is doing a stream so thanks very much for hanging out we're gonna go raid that you can come along if you like you don't have to and i'll be back uh i'll be back on thursday for my next build stream but on wednesday i'm doing a bonus stream i just